Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Daniel Rosa here. Um, I want to do a video on the TP-Link ER605 load balancer, or I have it running as a load balancer. It's, uh, as you can see in the title here, the Omada Gigabit Multi-WAN VPN router. Um, I did a video about load balancers and how they're actually incredibly useful for home networking, uh, particularly if you're doing, let's say, more advanced home networking. And what I mean by that is doing things like having a backup internet connection. I have a whole playlist of YouTube videos I made because I spent a lot of time this summer uh, working on that project to get myself really, really uh, business grade, very resilient home internet. And the way I, I've achieved that, the way anybody can achieve that actually, is to just have more than one internet connection in your house. It doesn't really matter if you're gonna go with a combination of fiber and satellite or DSL and cellular. The idea is that you have more than one connection um, and therefore, if uh, one connection goes down, then you can go over to connection two. And the only way you're gonna have no internet is if both connections go down. So you've just reduced the uh, likelihood of you having no internet at any one time a lot uh, by just having a very simple ISP backed by cellular configuration. High availability uh, is, is a term for this. And um, the, the magic that makes all this work on the network is uh, basically a multi-WAN router. And I talked about how uh, they can be described as sometimes VPN routers, wired routers, um, broadband routers. These are all actually slightly different things or SMB routers, but they typically all have load balancing as a feature and they can do failover. Um, and this is just a, these are, this is a category really of hardware that's more utilized in enterprises and businesses than in home networking, but uh, you can totally do it. Just wanna show you quickly how to enable the, uh, that failover is you go into transmission. Now what I've done by the way is, uh, if I just show you quickly my WAN configuration, I have, um, you can enable up to three of the ports or um, uh, describe up to three of the ports as WAN ports. There's five ports on this device in total. They are um, gigabit ports, so they can they can uh, have throughput up to, uh, so you know, you're not gonna have, they're not one, 10, 100 ports like uh, some of the older TP-Link load balancers. And uh, I've described two of these as WANs and basically that's ISP, that's cellular, and then in the bandwidth, sorry, load balancing um, menu here. You have to apparently enable this for this to work correctly. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to me that that would be the case just to do failover, which is all I'm doing um, because that's not really load balancing. Uh, but you do have to tick that on and then this is where you configure the backup rule and my one is pretty much as simple as could be. If WAN uh, goes down, then WAN being WAN1 being ISP, then move me over please onto uh, WAN, WAN 2 really, uh, which is a second WAN port and which is cellular. So that rule's in place and this manages my whole network, everything wired, everything wireless comes off this load balancer and this provides uh, routing for my entire home network and has that backup built into it. Now, um, when you pick this guy up, uh, you might wanna just check the firmware that it's running to make sure um, it's up to date. Never assume when you buy when you buy hardware from uh, even reputable tech shops. It could just be um, it's a slightly older model or the firmware's had a few upgrades. So it's always one of the first things I do after jotting down the uh, serial number, which I always also recommend, is to just check if there is a firmware upgrade. Some of them have automatic firmware upgrading tools. Others others are a bit manual. Uh, the TP-Link one is on the more manual side. So um, you have two numbers here, your firmware version and your hardware version. Um, both of these are really useful if you're interacting with TP-Link support. Um, they, in the TP-Link community forum, when you start a thread, there is a space for these. The more info, if you're having any trouble with a TP-Link product, whether you're looking for community support or official TP-Link support, the more info you can provide them with, the easier it's gonna be to diagnose your issue. So uh, just know these two numbers. So I'm using V1 uh, 1.0 of the ER605, as you can see here. And the firmware version I'm running currently is uh, this one here. So uh, what, you, what you would do to check if uh, this is new or old firmware is go onto the product page of your TP-Link product. This is the ER605. It's in TP-Link business. As I mentioned, um, these kind of routers that are gonna have load balancing and failover as a feature are more 
intended for business uh, users than consumers. Just a tidbit to be aware of. Um, click into support. And we just opened it up in another tab here for convenience. And uh, you're gonna get a page like this. Download for ER605 V1.6. So we have to be very, very careful because I'm not running V1. I don't have V1.6. My hardware is V1. So first order of business would be to change that over to one. And uh, there's also the Omada controlling software, but just click into firmware here. And this is it. So uh, you can see the latest firmware at the time I'm recording this video was uh, ER605 UNV1.1202. You can kind of see the nomenclature that's year 2021 uh, 07 for presumably they, the TP-Link engineers finished, wrapped this up at the end of July 07, 23. Um, and as it does mention, just make doubly sure that you're looking at the right product here, ER605 UN, uh, UN in brackets. Look on the back of your product to make sure that that is what you actually have. And I'm not gonna go ahead and flash the firmware uh, because I have the latest one running. But you can click on download and you can see you're gonna get a zip file. And all you need to do basically is extract the zip. Now I'm using Linux, so it's uh, gonna look a little bit different if you're on Windows, but just extract the .bin file. Uh, that's the actual firmware file, extract this. Then you wanna go into the uh, firmware upgrade tool uh, or utility, I should say, within system tools management, browse that, click upgrade, and then the firmware upgrade's gonna happen and then uh, the load balancer is going to reboot and that is the process complete. You've just backed up the firmware. A good idea actually before you do that just to go into the backup and restore and take a backup of your uh, current settings just in case anything goes wrong and you can restore from the later, but usually it's fine. So just double check before you upgrade the firmware, you're upgrading, uh, you're making sure that you're looking at the firmware for the right hardware and uh, just check what you have you can see i'm running 2021 07 23 and that is the latest one therefore there's no need for me to upgrade but uh you know check back every six months to one year you can get a feel for how often they push out upgrades this was uh, released in august this guy was released in march uh, and they have a little change log here for bugs they resolved with each successive upgrade uh etc as you can see just, just as if you're upgrading something, uh, you know, uh, operating system, you can take a look at what new features are added and see if it's worth your while uh, with doing the firmware upgrade, but probably a good idea. So check, check back, uh, bookmark, I would recommend bookmarking, bookmarking the firmware URL and perhaps putting a calendar entry in your Google Calendar. Just, you know, check back every six months or once a year. And if there is a more up-to-date firmware, then go ahead and flash that onto your hardware. Thank you guys for watching. More videos coming soon.